Video Studio now has new blending modes to manipulate how your overlay clips interact with your main clips. Make brighter pixels more transparent with Multiply Mode, or make darker pixels more transparent with Screen Mode. Use Overlay Mode to make solid colors into light leaks. Transfer the color of an overlay clip with Hue Mode. Use Difference Mode for more exotic blends. Or use any blending mode with matte modes so you can now mask and blend at the same time. To see how we made all of these examples, stay tuned. To understand blending modes, I'll demo each mode by showing how it makes a black to white gradient image interact with the clip below it. I'll drag this gradient to the overlay track. If I double click the clip and go to blending, we start out on normal mode but with opacity at 50%. Let's boost this up to 100 so we can see exactly what we're starting with. So you can see the top of this gradient is 100% black and the bottom is 100% white, and the middle is exactly between the two at 50% grey. If we change the blend mode to multiply, where the gradient was white is now completely transparent, and where the gradient was black is still completely black, and if it's dark grey it's more solid, and if it's light grey it's more transparent. But that's not everything that's going on with blending modes. We're not just making some areas transparent and leaving some solid, we're also blending the color hues. Let's drag this other gradient onto the overlay track. This one has the same white to gray to black in the center, but we've also got pure versions of red, green and blue and cyan, magenta and yellow, the main six colors in the digital color space. And if we switch this clip to multiply, now there's something else going on. The whiter end of the spectrum for each color has become transparent, and the darker end is still opaque. But the color hues have changed, depending on what the combined color of both clips is at each pixel. This is one of the key ways in which blending modes are different to simple opacity fades. If we switch the mode back to normal, we can see that the color hues are a lot closer to the original overlay clip. So what exactly is going on here? The clue is in the name of the blending mode, Multiply. Imagine black is zero and white is one, and every shade and color in between is a fraction between these two numbers, depending on its lightness, saturation, and hue. When Multiply mode is selected, each pixel is analyzed, one from the overlay clip and one from the underlying clip, and the values of each are multiplied together which is why Multiply will always make an image darker. The combination of colors will always be closer to zero or black than if the blend mode was normal. Because if we multiply a fraction by zero or pure black, the result will always be zero. Any number times by zero is zero, which is pure black. So we can use Multiply where we want the darker parts of an overlay clip to be seen, but the brighter parts to become more transparent and then the main video track will show through from underneath. For example, let me turn off this overlay track and enable this clip, which has a white background that I want to remove and just leave the dancers in a double exposure with the clip underneath. If I change the blend mode to multiply, the lighter parts become more transparent and I can control the opacity of the resulting blend to dial in the overall effect that I want. So what about the opposite? Let's go back to the first example with our gradient. And instead of multiply, let's select screen. This makes the reverse effect. The darker areas are now more transparent and the lighter parts of the overlay are solid. The math that's happening here is the inverse or negative of the overlay clip is multiplied by the color value of the underlying clip. So screen will always make darker colors more transparent and always leave us with a lighter overall image. So if we've got a clip with a dark background, like this guitar player, I can remove the background with screen mode. Similarly, if you use any stock footage that has black backgrounds rather than transparent alpha channel backgrounds, like this flame effect, you can make the effect sit properly on top of your footage by using screen to remove the black.
and you can of course stack multiple overlay tracks with a variety of blend modes at the same time, so we can have the acoustic guitarist and the flames. To recap then, multiply will make white transparent and make colour combinations darker, and screen will make black transparent and colour combinations lighter. The next mode, Overlay, does a bit of both and makes grey completely transparent, while also making white and black partially transparent. So in effect, it's making the highlights brighter and the shadows darker, which is basically the same as adding contrast. We can see with this block colour overlay, which is exactly 50% grey, that when we set it to Overlay mode, it has no effect. because Overlay turns the exact middle between white and black transparent. So, what can we use Overlay for in practice? As the name suggests, Overlay mode is great for really embedding an overlay with your original clip, because it crushes the blacks and blows up the highlights of your overlay, helping it to blend in to your main clip. For example, I've got this dust and scratches overlay to simulate old film stock that comes included with Video Studio. And while it kind of works with blending mode set to normal and opacity of 50%, I can make the effect embed onto the clip better with overlay mode. So that where my original clip is light, the overlay takes on some of that lightness, and where the underlying clip is dark, the overlay will be darkened. Or let's try a colour overlay. This orange lights clip, when set to normal and 50% opacity, is kind of interesting as a colour wash. But when I set it to overlay, how much more it embeds itself onto the original clip. With moving colour overlays like this, you can create much more realistic light leak effects, which in this instance could be simulating stage lighting to make the shot of the keyboard player more dynamic and interesting, or could just be a creative effect. This brings us on to hue mode. Whereas overlay mode takes the saturation and lightness of the overlay clip, as well as the overlay's hue, Hue mode will only take the overlay's hue or specific colour and transpose that colour onto the underlying clip. This means that parts of the clip that don't have much hue to them, like the white parts of this keyboard or the black background, don't get affected by the overlay, but anywhere that has saturation in the underlying clip will have its colour or hue altered to be closer to whatever the overlay clip is at that pixel at that point. And you can see if I turn the opacity of this overlay up, Everything that has any saturation from the underlying clip will have its hue replaced by the swirling orange of my overlay. The final new mode is Difference. Difference is an odd beast. Black areas in the clip will be transparent and colours will either subtract the overlay colour from the background colour or vice versa. It can be difficult to predict how it's going to react, and the colour theory to explain it is a bit beyond the scope of this video. But if you're looking for a strange, almost negative-like effect, then this is a good mode to try. For example, combining this silhouetted figure over this drum clip can make a pretty psychedelic effect. There's one other blending mode I want to touch on, although it's not new in this version of Video Studio, it's very useful, and this is Grey Key. Grey key is similar to multiply in that it makes lighter pixels transparent, but as it is a key rather than a traditional blending mode, it doesn't seek to combine colour values of the overlay and underlying clips, it just makes grey areas transparent. And that's it. Kind of like when you want to remove the green from a green screen background and you would use a chroma key to make green transparent but everything else remains solid. This is the same except here you're using grey or colours close to grey as the key. And we can make some pretty interesting compositions with this. Because the sky in this clip isn't very saturated, I can add grey key to it just to keep the foreground and the couple on the hill, completely changing the landscape that they're looking out at. I'll need to clean it up a bit, his shorts are slightly transparent here. I can use the threshold control to move the white point which introduces more white into the overlay image. And it's looking better, there's still some cleanup to do though, like these hills need to go, and I want to remove this tree, which I can do with a mask. 
because new to Video Studio, I can now add matte modes, basically masks or frames, separately to blend modes. So I just need to jump into Mask Creator, create a quick mask, use a circle and then paint in the additional bits of tree that I want to remove. And then change the transparency so I can see just what's inside the mask. Add a bit of feathering and then invert the mask because I don't want to just show the tree, I want to remove the tree. And then save as. Then I can cancel out of mask creation. Go to the matte modes drop down, press the plus to import a mask. Find the most recent folder where I saved the mask. And now it's applied. The tree is gone and I have a simultaneous blend and mask on the overlay clip to help it sit with my original clip. I can do a bit more cleanup, there's still some imperfections. I can adjust the threshold and cut off sliders, so I'm controlling what exactly is grey for the grey key to remove. And I can adjust the gamma to control the contrast of the overlay clip, so that the grey key is taking out just what I need to take out, but nothing more. So, hopefully this shows you not only how different blend modes work, but how to use them in your editing to blend your clips together in increasingly interesting ways. Happy editing.